Good evening, welcome and hello. My name is Benji. This is Mind Your Neighbours, the quiz that challenges three teams to plunge deep into their well of knowledge, hopefully to return with buckets brimming with refreshing logic. OK, let's meet this week's teams. I'm Kim. I'm Ozzy. And I'm Luke. We're the Kozlowskis. And our team name is the Kozlowskis. Hi, I'm Aiden. And I'm David. And, and we're, we're Team Bureaucracy. There you go. I'm Lauren. And I'm Tim. And we are the Servants, the servants of, of trousers, trousers, who is our cat. <laughs> Hi, all teams. The game's simple enough. I'll give you a question. You will discuss between yourselves, loud and proud. Your team captain will then reveal your chosen answer. Your first question today. What was the first animal to orbit the Earth? Was it a Sputnik, chimpanzee? Was it Laika? Like no. No, it was like it Laika like was in space, but I don't know if she yeah. orbited the Earth. I think it was a monkey. Was it a monkey I, it's first? It's got to be a dog. I thought it might have been a dog. A dog. Could have been a dog. I'm not going to overrule you on this one. I, I think it was a Russian dog. The answer is a dog? A dog? A dog. Maybe named Laika. It's the Soviet space dog, Laika. Plucked from the streets of Moscow and with no previous experience of flying a spaceship. Clever dog. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, it was like... No. Written like a... Mm. Your next question is about classic books. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, there were five children who won an exclusive ticket to tour the factory. But which of the children was the first to be eliminated? Was it Violet Beauregard? No, she was a blueberry. There was yeah. the, f uh, the one, the plum. The blueberry girl? Yeah, the blueberry girl. Was it maybe... Augustus Gloop? I, I would go Augustus Gloop. Was it Augustus Gloop? I think he ate the, um... He got stuck in the chocolate river. Augustus Gloop. Final answer. Augustus Gloop. <laughs> Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. It's Augustus Gloop. The gluttonous German boy who dove into the chocolate river and got stuck up the pipe. Man, nice. You're, you're nailing these. You. Good thing we have you here. Good one. These days, we all find ourselves in front of computers for hours on end. Typing is an essential skill. Can you order, please, the vowels from furthest left to furthest right on a standard keyboard? Left to right. It's QWERTY. Yeah, but what the vowels? So, so a, a comes first, for sure. B is like on a. the left. I think E is... E is definitely on the left hand, higher up. Yeah, QWERTY, so Q. The vowels. And there's I is on the... And O are on the right hand. The I is on the right, the U is kind of in the middle. A-E-I-O-U. U? I-O-U. I don't know. That's it. A. E. U. I. O. Furthest left on the second row we have A. Then we move up to the top row. E. U. I. O. Jump. Yeah. And sometimes what? Deep ball answer. Just like, yelling QWERTY yeah. didn't help. <laughs> wow, a powerful start there for you teams. We're going to go to the break, but here's one for you at home. What was the last letter to be added to the English alphabet? Was it J? K, X, or Z? We'll have the answers when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, folks. Before the break, I asked you, what was the last letter to be added to the English alphabet? Well, that was the letter J. Yes, it was discovered in 1524 by Italian grammarian Gian Giorgio Tresino. Presumably, he bumped into it in a bar somewhere. OK, let's check on those scores. Good scores, teams. Very close. OK, your next question is a face meld. We take two faces. We blend them together to create one new face. I'll give you one point for each of the celebrities you can name. Uh, I am... Is that... 
Is it James Corden? Is that James Corden, like the, the yeah, late night host? Yeah, I think so. The beard definitely looks like a Corden beard. Is the eye Chrissy Teigen? I think For it's sure. Kelly Clarkson. The eye and the mouth, I think, go together. Kelly Clarkson. Yes, it is. Some blonde person like Christina Aguilera. Sure. James Corden and Kelly Clarkson? Kelly Clarkson and James Corden. James Corden and Christina Aguilera. Well, that's hairy face TV sensation James Corden and American Idol first season winner, Kelly Clarkson. What a beautiful combination. Uh, oh, it's Kelly Clarkson. Oh, you got, okay. Kelly, you got James Corden. Okay. Nice. That was my butt that broke the chair a little. <laughs> well, if you still have an appetite after that image, let's talk pizza. How much larger is the surface area of an 18-inch pizza compared to a 9-inch pizza? Area equals pi r squared, right? Well... Pi r squared. Pizza pi r squared, right? Oh, this is math. Right? So yeah, and the inches is the diameter, so... so it's 9 times 9, 18 times 18. It's the... the... You... The circ... The circumference? Yeah. <laughs> four and a half and nine squared. It's the difference between four and a half and nine squared, right? 18 times 18? I don't know that one. Four times. Four times larger? 18. Well, despite being only twice the diameter of a nine-inch pizza, an 18-inch pizza actually has four times the surface area. Now that is bang for inch. Four times what? Four. Ah! Oh my god, we, yeah. <laughs> we got it. All this teaching you math during homes during homeschooling is paying off! Oh, we got that right, David. <laughs> you got that right, Aiden. <laughs> Put those pizza cravings to one side. It's time for an inky dinky. Hmm. What's an inky dinky, I hear you say? What? Well, an inky dinky is a two-word phrase. Both the words have got two syllables and they rhyme <laughs> like inky. A dinky. OK, here's one for you, teams. Riddle me this. When the chuckling is done. Laughing. Oh. Um. After laughter. <laughs> After laughter. Oh, there's something over. After laughter? <laughs> yeah. After laughter. The giggle pickle, is that what <laughs> no, we were going with? that's not even an inky dinky. After <laughs> laughter. After laughter, please. After, After laughter. laughter. We'd like to pass. <laughs> yeah. Very well done, teams. After <laughs> laughter. I'm going to have to make these a bit tougher. Uh, OK. <sighs> that makes sense. And you thought that was really uh -huh. easy. When it comes to sci-fi, Star Trek is the king of the skies. Now, Spock, he's an odd fellow. But what colour is his blood? This is all you. Oh, it's a lot of pressure. Do Vulcan? Do Vul I want... It's like a half Vulcan, right? Green? Is it? I think it's green. I mean, I'm just... Is he half human? Isn't he? No. Green? Did he bleed often in the show? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. They made a thing oh, okay. of it. Yeah. I'm going... Blue? I would say blue. Green? Blue? Blue blood. Well, Spock's blood is green, probably because he's half alien. That said, major trauma could also cause your blood to go green. And having watched The Wrath of Khan a few times, I wouldn't rule that out. Green. Sorry. That sounds more alien, really. Oh, green. I said green, and I trusted your nerdiness. <laughs> Not nerdy enough. Ooh. I would have gotten that wrong. I didn't it would have. Know that. It would have been the worst for me. <laughs> Back down to earth with a classic geography question. Now, have a look at this map of South America. Can you name those two landlocked countries? Okay, is one of them Ecuador? Nope. Uruguay, Paraguay. So which one's Argentina? Or Bolivia? Paraguay is one of them. Number two is Bolivia. No, Bolivia is, I think, is in Central America, no? And I think number two is oh, it's Bolivia. Got some Bolivia and Paraguay? I think it's Uruguay, Paraguay? Paraguay and Bolivia. Bolivia and Paraguay. On this map, we were looking for Bolivia and Paraguay. I'm sorry. Oh, I knew it. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's just a game. You know, oh, relax man. my body language here. <laughs> Your last question in this section is about Monopoly, the classic game of money management, property development, and conflict resolution. How many different value banknotes are there in the game of Monopoly? One, five, five, ten, ten, twenty. 20, 50. 50. Is there a 100? There's a 100. Is there a 200? Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500. Isn't it like normal money? A 20 and a 100, maybe a 50? 
And I think that, I think there are six. Is there like a gotcha like million one or something? I'm I, overthinking. No, I don't think so. Six. Six. Seven. Well, there's the one, the five, the ten, the twenty, the fifty, the one hundred, and the five hundred. Now, if I remember rightly, it's the person who looks after the bank who's the one you've really got your, your eye on. That's what I said. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I win it. Board game capitalism. Seven. Five hundred dollar bill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we are we're close. Oh, I knew there was an extra one. There's a seven note. Oh, I counted seven. Forgot the five hundred. You didn't trust in me. I hope you're having as much fun at home as they are in the garden. Okay, we're gonna take a short break, but here's one for you at home. Which country briefly used tulip bulbs as a currency in the 17th century? Is it the Netherlands? Is it Britain? Or was it Switzerland? We'll be right back with the answers. Welcome back, folks. Now, before the break, I asked you, which country briefly used tulip bulbs as a currency in the 17th century? It was the Netherlands, where rich merchants would trade bulbs on the stock market. The bulbs which carried the greater promise of unusual colors would carry a higher value. And like most bubbles, it burst pretty quick. Let's have a look at the scores. Well, hopefully that score didn't burst your bubble. OK, take a look at these two cartoon characters. I'll give you one point for each of the correct TV shows in which they star. OK, what, well, who's that, that on the left with the orange hair? Gaffney from Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo and BoJack Horseman. Who is that? Right. She's from BoJack Horseman. Scooby-Doo and BoJack Horseman. Scooby-Doo and BoJack Horseman. Scooby-Doo and Daria? Well, from the classic Scooby-Doo, we have Daphne. And from the Canadian-made Bojack Horseman, that's Diane. Oh, Bojack Horseman, no, we, okay. always, we always talk about watching Yeah, that. we do, yeah, yeah. No, we, never, no, we do. never do. No, no. no. I, I remember that from the library. Nice. A bit of science for you now. There are 118 elements in the periodic table. Can you name two that have five letters in their name? Uh, antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, rhenium. Those are all more. Boron is one. Boron. Boron. Yeah. Um, Copper. Copper is too no. many. So many four four letter ones. Argon and. Boron and. Argon and xenon. Boron and xenon. Well, there are three noble gases: the radon, xenon, and argon, and the non-metallic solid, boron. Yeah, we still love you guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Nice. Yeah. I don't know what Xenon is, so... A bit of music for you now. A chamber orchestra has less than 50 members. What type of orchestra has more than 50 members? A philharmonic orchestra? I don't know any other kind of orchestra. Symphony orchestra? I, I Symphony. would think the same. If you would have said chamber orchestra, I would have said like five. So I, yeah, I have no idea. Either. Okay. I would say a symphony orchestra. But I thought it would be like an orchestra that you okay. could have in your chamber. A philharmonic orchestra? I don't actually know the difference. Symphony. A symphony orchestra. A philharmonic orchestra? I would accept symphony or philharmonic. The words are interchangeable. They both mean harmonious music. Da -da 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 -da. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. OK, time for your second Inky Dinky of the day. I've cranked up the Inky Dinkyometer to 7.5, so it's a bit tougher for you. Riddle me this one, team. Refuse the option to lean comfortably. I know. Can we? You got it already? Oh, a decline, recline. Nice. Or recline, decline, maybe. Decline, recline. 
Oh, I like that, David. That's a very quick inky dinky answer. I'm gonna go with recline, decline. Decline, recline. Recline, decline. Impressive work teams. There's a point there for decline, recline. Yeah. Yes. 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 Back on top. The master. A math puzzle for you next. On the screen, you will see a series of equations. Follow the rule and tell me what number should replace the question mark? Uh, they're multiplying things by two, then they're multiplying. Ooh. Seven doubled is 14. I'm struggling, David. So four times two is eight. So we uh, got to go up and down. So up and down. So it's it's oh. like they're cubing and they're squaring and dividing by something maybe. Yeah. Five doubled would be ten. It goes up by 17 and then 720. 23. 810. I was no help. Let's break it down. Look at your first one. We have the number 21. It's made up of the numbers 2 and 1. If you multiply both those numbers by 2, join them together again, you get 42. If you take the 45, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10, join them together, the answer is 810. Really impressive if you got that one, teams. Eight, ten, we were way off. I was relying on other people to, to come up with that one for wow. me. Wow, math. <laughs> Time for the obligatory sports question. Ice hockey. You can really tell I'm English when I say that. Now, the Stanley Cup has eluded Canadian hands for quite some time. But who were the last two Canadian teams to lift the trophy? This and is, uh, Stanley Cup is all filled up for the chance to win well, the drink. <laughs> Montreal Canadiens, 1992. It's a good old hockey game. game. It's the best game you can name. <laughs> Montreal Canadiens, Calgary yeah. Flames. Are you sure it wasn't Edmonton? No, Calgary was after Edmonton. After the Edmonton dynasty, I'm pretty sure it was Calgary Flames, because I remember Calgary winning. The Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames. The Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames. Calgary Flames and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. Well, we have to go back to the last century, or even millennium, to find the Montreal Canadiens who won it in the 92-93 season. Prior to that, the Edmonton Oilers. What? You're busy singing? I thought you had it. Ooh. Sweet. Ozzy is a bit of a whiz kid. He, um, he's been counting since he, before he was even one. He, when he, right around when he turned two, he was counting in like to triple digits, like as recreation. That yeah. was like his thing he liked to do was count. I remember specifically like one morning in, in Montana, uh, we were just like lying in bed, just slowly waking up and Ozzy was just lying down counting and he counted up to like 600. We both play piano. Yeah, David. Our cat, uh, Trousers, who we all work for, uh, her full name is Trousers F Pants. The F stands for fluffy. Um, and she's really smooth. And she bites you. Very smooth. She's incredibly <laughs> smooth and then <laughs> bites only Lauren, but likes you way more. Yeah, we have a love-hate relationship. And your last question in this section, returning to our favorite man boy, Harry Potter. How many books are there in the official Harry Potter series? What do you think? There's in eight. The official series. I didn't read any of them. Seven? Oh. I just said the other day, oh, I've seen one of the movies. Are not you, counting you sure? The Cursed Child. Yeah, I think so. Seven! I think uh, six, but... Sorcerer's Stone slash Philosopher's Stone. I think there's eight. Seven books. We're gonna go with seven. We're going with seven for sure. It's seven. Eight. Maybe or seven. Well, let's think. There was that first book about wizards. There was the second book also about wizards, and uh, then there's that run of five more, culminating in number seven, that great story of wizards. Oh, seven. Oh, see, the oh. movies had me all mixed up. Seven books. Yes. I remember Here's the, the, last the one. boy who lived is right here. Excellent work, teams. Now, we're going to take another short break, but here's one for you at home, Aladdin. Now, he had special powers he used to infiltrate a booby-trapped cave. But can you tell me, whose face did Walt Disney base Aladdin's face on in the 1992 animated film? Was it Robin Williams, Tom Cruise, or Michael J. Fox? 
We'll have the answers when we come back. Welcome back to Mind Your Neighbours. Before the break, I asked you, who did Walt Disney base Aladdin's face on in the 1992 animated movie? The answer, Tom Cruise. A face that never seems to change. And the final piece in today's quizzing puzzle is the word grab, a point blowout. You're gonna see eight letters on the screen. You will come up with as many five letter words as you can, using any of those words a maximum of once each. Your time starts now. Flank! Knife. Lint. Fate. Um, no, that's four. Flank. Final. Final. Knife. Flake. Taken. I like. Um. Uh, woo! Uh, <laughs> Final. Knife. Uh. Knife. Fetal. Faint. Lichen. Talkie. Walkie talkie. That's really good, teams. There were so many options in there. Did you lay claim to a magic alien? <laughs> Let's check on the scores. Yay! The Benji Cup! Triple level book! Yes! <sighs> oh. Well, I guess that's why we came out here. I guess we should read we should more. Should read, or something. should read more Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, guys. Humiliating. It's okay, guys. We still have we still have each other. Fantastic job, teams. You've all done extremely well. We've laughed, we've played, we've learned, we got burned. But at the end of the day, I think we've had some fun. We hope you enjoyed the show at home. We'll be back next week for more Mind Your Neighbours. Good night. Never know when they're going to do your favors. That's why it's up to you.